Hey guys, it is Hope here at Crafty Hope, and I'm doing a bit of an experiment. My husband and I recently got a laser cutter. You've seen some of my vlogs, you've probably seen that. Um, and it hit me that I could make some Christmas ornaments with them um, for Hello Gallery Art and Things in downtown Fairhope, where I have a, a space. Um, so I came up with this design. So this will be one side and then the other side is blank for me to do whatever I want to do with it. And so I thought what I'm going to do on all three of these is first off I'm going to create a master board which is basically taking a piece of paper, gluing other collage materials and papers and altering it and then cutting it down into smaller pieces. So I'm going to do that and I think figure out some way to adhere that to these um, backs or fronts and then sealing it with resin. It's an idea. I don't know how it'll do. <laughs> this is, but I need to start cranking out some things to get up there for Christmas. And I thought this would be kind of fun. So I'm going to take y'all on it. Um, tell you what I've pulled out. Um, I'll put these away so I don't damage them. Um, this is some kind of mixed media paper here that was some under paper. And that's the bulk of what I'm going to use. I also have some under papers here. Um, and then I've got some other collage papers. And that's what I'm going to start with is just collaging some, oh, and here's my scraps, of course. And I'm going to use this Distress Matte Collage Medium. I have not used it before, um, but I picked it up here recently and I need to use it. So I thought, let's go for it. So I've got two of these that so I may be working in going back and forth between them. So it's a start. It's something. I'm going to um, probably fast forward through this. I may talk you through it. I may just play music. Who knows? Let's, let's go on this ride together and see what happens. And like I mentioned, the first thing I wanted to do was collage down things. So basically, I'm making a master board, and that tends to be just a, a board where you, a board, some kind of large piece of paper that you're going to cut down into something smaller, and you add lots of colors and collage and marks and all of that. So the first thing I'm doing is covering up this entire piece of paper. None of it is going to show... I really just, I'm using it because it's a good solid substrate, but not too thick. I don't know. So the way I am starting this is using larger pieces of paper. And I am using that distressed collage medium. I really loved it. I'll go, I'll say that again here later. But I'm spreading that out, putting down these larger pieces of paper. That one's not so large, but it, I think it broke off that piece of ledger. And I'm going to kind of skip around on this because I think y'all understand collaging. And I'm using a lot of this under paper, which really, y'all, I will really wish I had kept more of my under papers because it's one of my favorite things on here. <laughs> and so here's a big piece of like dictionary paper. And once I get these larger pieces glued down, I put down some like transparent things, tea bags, sewing paper, tissue paper, things like that, that kind of go over these larger pieces, give them a transparency, a, a different tone. And I think in some of those places, you might see some of that under paper, but not in, not in the same way. So once I get those down, I'm going to start coming in with smaller pieces of paper and filling in some of those white gaps. So you can see I'm kind of doing that here with some um, paper I got from your creative studio and whatever else is in my scrap box. There's all kinds of things. I will, through this process, turn and move that under paper so, you know, I have different angles from it. Oh, and here I use some, y'all, that is some wrapping paper. I think it was something my sister-in-law gave me, and I really loved that wrapping paper. I kept it just for collage purposes like this. So once I get these last little bits filling in some of those big open spaces, I will, I will call this done for the most part. What am I doing here? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting these last little bits. I wanted to make sure there was a bit of texture in all of it. So my master board debate, I actually, you saw this one get made on camera. This one was off camera. I'm trying to decide really what my color palette's going to be with these. And oh, somehow I did not get any collage medium on there. And y'all, I have to say, I really liked using this um, Tim Holtz 
um, it's just collage medium, right? Matte collage medium. It it is lovely. It it's got great fluidity. Um, it's stuck really well. Um, I use this makeup spread. I've seen um, Lisa Goddard use one before. And I, before I haven't liked it on different with different products, but I really liked it with this. So um, I mean, y'all may be seeing that more often. So, but I really and I like the finished smoothness of it so I'm gonna add some I don't really know what I'm gonna do yet um my collage is down I may add some stamping I might pull out some of my stamps um I'm trying to figure out like what color palette I want to bring into it so I may bring some like gelato and colorix type things I'm not sure I'm just kind of playing it right now and um, so you'll see, I will try to talk through some more of this and we'll see, we'll see what happens. So that second one I showed y'all was, I'm considering that my pink one, and I did start with that one with some stamping and then stenciled these white dots onto it that I then switched over to my traditional one. This is what I'm calling this one that y'all saw me collage. So I'm, yeah, starting with stenciling and it works out really beautifully. I, some of my other ones that I do later than this, I didn't do the stenciling and I kind of wish I had. So this is simple. Um, this is just a, I don't even know where I got the stencil y'all, but I am using a cosmetic wedge on it and doing the white and then I'm bringing in this is Americana's I think it's Irish moss green and another stencil and uh that same I'm cutting down that same cosmetic wedge because why waste it I'm just cutting that white portion off so it doesn't mix with that green and then I'll come in with this a unique stencil. I don't even know. I was trying to go with something stencils that kind of felt Christmassy, you know, like this has, I don't know, it's almost a tree shape. The dots kind of made me think of, uh, I don't know, like snowballs. I don't consider snow to be Christmassy because it does not snow where I live. Uh, but that's what I was kind of sticking with. So, once I get these green down, and I'm doing these really sporadically. I didn't want them consistently over the whole master board, just kind of randomly throughout it. And then the last thing I'm going to do is some gold stars, because of course that is very Christmassy. And yeah, again, using that cosmetic sponge, doing it sporadically. This gold doesn't Ooh, doesn't like pop or anything. Actually, none of these stencils do, but when you look at... The ornaments in the end they kind of like peek through there and add hints of color and shape and it's it's really beautiful and that's what this whole master board does is it gives you a little snippet of all kinds of things to look at so once I get that stenciling done I'm gonna look at this for a bit and try to decide what does it need and I decided what it needed was some red if I'm gonna make this traditional Christmas colors I needed red so I'm coming in with a Posca acrylic paint pen and making little like plus signs like crosses and putting those all over you know again I don't want them too close together or too many of them because I don't want it to cover the entirety of each of the ornaments I just want little hints of this on each of them and I knew about what size I was making the ornaments or I had made them on the laser cutter so yeah I was just kind of keeping in mind that this needed to be a sporadic pattern and not something that's continuous so I had a good time with this I really really like these acrylic paint marks so once I got the those red down I took a dark green one and you can see how far up on that marker I am holding this and making these like circles and it's one of my favorite things when these ornaments get done are these crazy little loose circles for a little more texture in the background, I'm scribbling with my chunky pencil, just all over nothing, just a, it's a texture thing for me. And then I decided I did not have near enough red on here, so I'm using a, oh y'all, I don't even know what that is, maybe an Anita's acrylic, I'll try to put it down below, I'll find it, and at least list what it is below. And making finger dots, which end up to me feeling kind of like Christmas bulb ornaments kind of all over here and there 
it's so sporadic. And then, of course, I need some splatter. I didn't feel like I had enough black popping on there. So I'm going to use my Sharpie paint pen, prime it a little bit, and then sling it across the master board. And you can see I am moving this master board just in a big circle, trying to get those splatters kind of going in every direction. And I, what else do I do? I Oh, of course, I need to pull out my Liquitex gold ink and get a little more splatter on there. The gold stenciling that I did in there is fine, but there's nothing quite like this Liquitex gold ink for some, some pretty little pops. And it's not a huge statement. It's just, yeah, it's just something pretty that's going to go on there. So once that's done, I think I'm going to dry the whole thing just like that. And then come in with... Um, for some reason, I there was some pink on there somewhere that I felt like this needed some pink on it. So I'm using a Stabilo Woody in pink and just scribbling a little bit and then grabbing a paintbrush and activating it. And I think it, ooh, yeah, some of that black wasn't dry, was it? So I'm going to pick that up. And once I do that, I start questioning my choice of the pink so I'm going to scribble it somewhere else and look at it and decide it's just not really what I want yeah I'm scribbling it all over the place I don't remember even adding this much pink to it so I will activate it and then I think I'm going to come in with that paintbrush and pick up as much of it as I can because I'm just just not really digging it <laughs> it's yeah so I'll dry it, not really digging that pink. And here are the, these are the 12 by 12 boards I used on the laser cutter. And I'm using them as the templates for my ornament shapes to kind of envision where I want to cut these. So I'm going to use, have it flipped like that. And I started to use my Stabilo to trace it, but decide to just use this pen. Y'all, I don't remember what this pen is, but it worked perfectly on top of all of that media. I'll try to put a link to it below. And yeah, so I'm going to move this around. I really like this method because I can see exactly what those ornaments are going to look like. And I know that when I cut these, because I'm tracing the inside of these and not the outside, that these papers I cut will come to the inside of the ornaments. So say there will be an edge of the wood that shows on all of these. And I, I'll show you my solution for it momentarily once I get these cut. So I'm just doing one of each shape here for y'all to see. And once, yeah, once I get those three traced, I'm just going to cut loosely around those to get them off the master board so that it's not as clunky to try to cut them out. So, yeah, that's just my thing. And I'm going to tell you, y'all, I used so much of this master board. I cut little circles later and have made earring uh, or I've made, I don't know, charms ish things with the master board so that there's not hardly any of it left. Left. Now, in addition to this, what I'm calling my traditional one, I did do that pink one. I also did a blue color wave and then what I consider my neutral color wave. So um, you'll get pictures of all four of those. Those are all up at Hello Gallery. I'm hoping to make some more color waves to go both up there and maybe in the Etsy shop. I'm not sure yet. Stay tuned for that. So I am cutting these as close to those black lines on there. I really don't want the black pen line to show. On a couple of them, they do, and it's fine because it comes across as just some of the texture in the background. And you can see I'm cutting across so that there's a straight line up there to leave that section where, you know, on ornaments where they've got the little silver thing that goes on it, I am leaving that so it looks like that little cap, that ornament cap is on there it's because I'm going to come in here in a little bit with something else to, to accentuate this. I think I mentioned in my vlog that this was a very much a multi-step process. <laughs> so yeah. All right, so this is the last one I'm cutting down. So I called this shape my retro shape because it feels like a retro ornament. And then the round ones are my circle shapes. And then those other ones I'm calling a bulb shape because they look like a Christmas bulb to me. 
All right, so I am taping off here. To, uh, in the future, I, I end up skipping this step, but uh, yeah, I guess I found it was just as easy to, to paint this without this. I was trying to be so exact with the, this first set that I didn't end up using it. And I'm just using masking tape to tape it off. But it, this was unnecessary, at least this this here, this side. And then I'm using some, this is Modern Masters Olympic Gold Paint. I really love this gold paint. But throughout my process, I used other colors as well on other more ornaments. Some of them I used black. Some of them I used um, black with silver on top of it. It depended on the ornament and the kind of the color wave that they had. So since I did so much gold on these, the gold was was pretty nice. And I'm just painting the edges. In fact, in future ornaments, I use a much thinner brush because I really just need like a two millimeter line on the outside of all of these to make sure if any of that wood shows, it's not just showing the bare wood. It's it's got it's got something extra to it. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I'm just going around this with the paint. I don't, I don't really need to show you all three of them, but I wanted you to see that I, as I painted, I put one to the side to let it dry while I worked on the next one. And I, yeah. And I'm trying to make sure it doesn't get very much on the edges. And I can't believe I just placed that one on top of the other one there. Whoa. That's, I'm very lucky there. That didn't get all over that ornament. <laughs> I'm a messy maker, y'all. And I think somewhere in here is where I start to realize that I didn't need as much of it painted. And the, really my idea here is I want the connection of the master board to the ornament to be paper to wood and not so much paper to paint. Because then it's not actually sticking to the ornament. It's sticking to the paint. Does that make sense? So that's why I ended up doing the thinner line later. While that continues to dry, I have pulled out my ink blender and my walnut ink stain, and I'm inking the edges of this. Now, again, in future ones, I might, I use my black soot as well as my, this walnut stain. It just depended on the ornament. So I'm going to ink the edges of all of these and... I tried to remember to ink that little thing at the top too. I in some of them somehow I kept missing that. <laughs> yeah, these were a lot of fun for me, guys. And what really makes them special is when the resin gets on there, all of those little details that we put on that master board just get amplified somehow. It's like a micro, not in a microscope, magnifying glass. All right, so I'm doing the last little trims on these, taking a look at them, and then to glue them down, I am going to use some wood glue. Now, I am using, it's just some Dollar Tree wood glue. It's, you could probably use like a tacky glue just as well as this wood glue, but I figured I'm gluing to wood. I've got this here. Let me go ahead and use it. I know my husband has an ample supply of more wood glue, but since I had it, it's like, why let it go to waste and let it dry up? So I'm going to squeeze that straight on to my ornament. And I'm using this. It's a glue spreading tool. It's silicone. It's great because when the glue dries, I can pull out that glue and use it again. It's, yeah, it's something my husband bought me specifically for stuff like this. So I found once I got that glue on there, this glue dries pretty quickly. Um, so I put that on there, placed it, and then I let each of those dry. It, it was a simple process. Once they were all dry, I mixed up my resin. Most resin is a two-part resin that you need equal parts of it. And I started by putting them, putting the resin, a good big dollop in the center of it. And I'm using a plastic paintbrush to pull it out to the edges. I'm trying not to go over the edges because I'm afraid if it does, it will stick to the surface underneath. Now, all I'm using there, y'all, I've got a baking tray with a silicone mat in it and a cooling rack sitting on top. This is all stuff I am only going to use for crafting. 
this is not stuff I'm going to ever use in my kitchen ever again. So, well, that baking rack I ended up putting back in the kitchen because I got some aluminum ones for the same process. But if you have a silicone mat, parchment works just as well. Just know you'll end up probably throwing it away if you do get any drips. Now I'm pulling this all the way out to the edges. Once I get this spread on all of them, I come back in and add more to the edges. These also needed a second coat. Um, some of them do because it kind of, depending on how it lays and how much you've put on there, they get, that resin will shrink in and the edges don't get covered. And if you have to put another layer on top, that's fine. You know, go for it just to make it look as well as it could. Now, the resin I'm using here had to dry for at least 24 hours. Look at the resin that you buy. It can be 12 hours, 24 hours. There are some that, um, like a UV resin, can dry in seconds, but I didn't really want to use that much UV resin. I'm, I'm going traditional with the two-part resin. Once those have set and dry, I did tape off the other sides and use some of that metal leaf adhesive stuff. Um, it has to sit on the ornament for half an hour to get good and tacky. And then I apply my silver leaf. Now I could use gold leaf since these have gold in it, but I really wanted these to have that feel of like a, a regular ornament bulb, which almost always have the silver toppers on them. So um, yeah, so I'm putting that on there. As soon as that gets on there, I can bring in a paintbrush and brush off the excess. Y'all, I am no expert in silver leafing. I will tell you that much. <laughs> this was a mess. It was a process that I probably, you know, once I did it, I was like, okay, well, I have to do it for all of them. But, uh, it was not, this is my least favorite part of this process was the silver leafing. I did silver leaf both sides of these, both the, you can see the laser cut or laser engraved side as well as the resined side just for that consistency. But you see the mess that the silver leaf makes. Uh, if y'all have tips on silver leafing, please, please let me know. Um, this, like I said, was not my favorite part of the process. So I'm trying to brush off that excess. I'm using a little um, like pokey tool to get any additional silver leaf off without brushing all the silver leaf off. Oh, this was so tiresome for me. <laughs> so once I got all the silver leaf on, I will pull up that bit of masking tape and as carefully as I can and make sure it's everything's adhered on there. And I will do that for all of them. All right, guys, that is pretty much the process. I did add twine through the holes at the top of these. And here's a look at all of them. Probably more pictures than you need to see, but I love these. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I will tell you what I, what I know. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button, and I um, will hopefully have more for you later. Have a very happy holiday season. Bye.